Hey you guys, welcome back. Uh, a number of years ago I did a, an arrangement of a tune called Laura. Probably heard of it before. It's kind of a standard uh, today based on, a, I believe it was from a movie and it was a theme song or something like that, but it's a great tune. And uh, I wanted to show you uh, an introduction I did for this particular arrangement and show you some of the things that I did and perhaps you can steal from or yeah, I used some things, or at least the methodology that I was thinking at the time. And uh, basically, uh, it, it's a long introduction based on a few different things. One is the Phrygian scale, and two are uh, chromatic planing, and also, so the Phrygian scale provides the harmony, uh, chromatic planing, as well as I stole snippets from the melody. So whenever you can use stuff from the actual tune, uh, you can derive uh, melodies, or you can you know, quote the melody or whatever, maybe change it a little bit. It, it tends to be a little bit more cohesive. So this is just the introduction. I won't do the whole chart or whatever, but I wanted to show you a few things, um, things that you may want to think about and try to think out, you know, exactly what you're trying to do before you even sit down at the piano and write a note. So my thinking was I wanted to base this introduction on the Phrygian scale. If you're not unfamiliar with the Phrygian scale, it's a mode based in a key based on the third note of the scale. So here we have a C. Everybody knows a C major scale. If we went up and, and plugged in all the white keys on a D, we get a Dorian uh, mode or a Dorian scale, uh, which is the supertonic, I believe. It, it's, this is the tonic, this is a supertonic. The next one up is what we call a Phrygian scale. And it's based on this set of holes and half steps. If I'm just gonna play right up the key. So you really can't tell, uh, you know, the tonic key from that scale. So I thought that was kind of a mysterious thing. And that's what I wanted to make this introduction, very mysterious. And then throw in parts of the melody as well. And I also use chromatic planing to get between some of these notes. So I started off with just a uh, simple, and I'll, I'll play, play the chart after this uh, in, a, in a moment. But I started off with just a bass line. And I stole from the from I stole the best notes I think from that Phrygian scale, which are the half steps. So I basically had the bass player once the drummer started the time on a cymbal, very quiet. I had the bass player come in, basically repeat this mantra, and that's all he does for the entire pretty much the entire introduction. So based on those notes, I thought, well, maybe I could have um, the piano start out with the little thing that the trombones could actually um, duplicate after that. So the piano player comes in with this particular set of notes. And as you can hear, that's pretty, um, fairly mysterious. It's got some dissonance in it. It's just kind of got a, just a cool sound, I thought. So if you notice that this um, voicing is made with a half step on the bottom, and then a uh, whole step on the top, I thought, well, maybe I could just kind of utilize um, a phrase by moving that around and basically transposing it. So I came up with. So all I did was transpose up and use the same. Now this, this particular chord does not fit an E Phrygian scale at all. But since I plan I basically just transposed it and moved right back, it works pretty well. And that was the first phrase. The second phrase, I moved it up a step and came back down. Okay, so that, so my lead line is... the trombones continue to play that I added on to the, with the trumpets and I put a flute on top and I started messing around with throwing in the melody so you'll hear in, in a moment you'll hear the tenor player um, basically um, have a snippet of the melody which is if you know this tune you'll know where that comes from and I also had the um, the uh, flute double uh, harmon muted or I think they're harmon muted maybe straight mutes I forget I had them um, double at the octave up here. And you'll hear some chromatic planing. So, I, so 
you get you you basically get and all of those notes fit in the E Phrygian scale. Remember, we got this bass player laying this down throughout, and the trombones. Okay, and all this builds to um, kind of the end of the introduction, I guess you could say. Uh, while everybody has their little snippets of the melody and they're laying down this um, mysterious Phrygian type of background. And then I have them all come in on, on a, a unison line that pretty much uh, gets us back to the key, uh, which would be, I believe, uh, it's getting us back to A minor, or at least the first, first chord of A minor. So you can listen through, but if you get anything out of this, think of... of uh, maybe sitting down with a pencil and paper and figuring out how you want to, uh, you know, go from a macro area, how you want to um, have something sound, and then you find the musical aspects. In my case, this was a, it was a mysterious thing that built from, from almost nothing, which would be just a cymbal on the drums, to, uh, to uh, you know, a screaming big band um, thing, and that would bring in the, the actual tune. So the listener hears, it's actually the longest introduction I've ever wrote. It's one minute long, I believe, a little over a minute long, just introducing the tune. But introductions, introductions can do wonders when, you know, you're uh, writing a tune, especially if it's a little longer or something. You can uh, basically introduce the listener to various things, and you should take m music from the actual arrangement to make your introduction. That really makes a lot of cohesiveness. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And... Uh, as always, uh, take care, and if you like what you see on this channel, just subscribe, like, or whatever. It does help the channel anyway. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.